Hi everyone, welcome to another Modern Play video. I'm Nathan and this is Blue Red Delver. If you watched my video blog number 2 and 2.5, then you would know that I polled my viewers to find out what deck you guys wanted to see other than Blue White Red Geist. And don't worry, there's still going to be more Blue White Red Geist to come. In fact, I think we're going to be playing some Esper Geist. I have a good friend of mine working on that. And we're also going to be playing some Mono Green Stoppy. So stay tuned for that. But today we have Blue Red Delver and... I want to talk to you guys just a little bit about the list. Um, so this is essentially Blue-Red Tempo Delver. To my knowledge, there are two primary versions of Blue-Red Delver. There's this version, which kind of plays the tempo game, and then there's the more aggressive uh, Monastery Swift, Swift, Spear, Swift Spear version, which is kind of all in on attacking, doesn't run any counter magic, just wants to deal as much damage as quickly as possible. Um, I think that this version, I'm not going to go so far as to say it's better. I really don't know. I would guess it's probably better. Um, but it's probably more the style that I want to play. More interactive, less all-in. Um, so this this list uh, I got essentially from LSV's video on Channel Fireball. Now, there's a couple of differences that I want to talk to you guys about. The first one is in the sideboard. If you'll notice, our sideboard only has 13 cards. And that's because I do not own Eidolon of the Great Revel on Magic Online. Now, I think it's a sweet card. I'd like to buy it, but I think it's 12 or 13 ticks. Um, and I just don't I just don't own them. And right now, I don't want to necessarily spend 25 bucks to get them. Now, if any viewers would be willing to let me borrow them for a little bit, I would be more than happy to borrow them. Although, I would guess that if you own them, that's probably so that you can play with them. Uh, but you know what? It never hurts to ask. So we're going to look for some sideboard alternatives, at least for now, uh, that we can run in lieu of those cards. Now, if I really like the deck, and, and if it's something everybody enjoys watching, and it's something that we sort of kind of, you know, grow together, meaning I play it, you guys like it, we, you make some suggestions, maybe we change, change the deck around some, then, you know, that's something that I'd be willing to make an investment in. But let's see how it goes. Um, so this is his list. So before we tackle the main board, let's start with making a sideboard change or two. I have something I personally want to try. So Monastery Swift Spear, there's a one of, and I believe it was, yeah, I might be forgetting the, the, the first name, but a viewer, I think his name is, I knew his last name was Buchanan. It might've been Richard Buchanan. He said, hey man, take that Monastery Swift Spear out. He just had it in testing. And yeah, I mean, why would he just have one Monastery Swift Spear? So let's take this guy out. Now, there's two cards that I've been kind of wanting to try in this version of the deck, and one of them is Is It Charm. Not only is it sometimes a counter spell, not only is it sometimes a bit of removal, but it also is probably a good card to uh, find treasure cruises along with it, fueling treasure cruises. So it's a card that I wanted to try. Um, I'm having trouble with my mouth. Here we go. So let's let's see. Let's find uh, let's find our Is It Charm and bring that in. Now, everybody's familiar with Mana Leak. I, I like Mana Leak. It's great early. It's really bad late. One card that I want to try is actually Deprive. And essentially the reason is uh, Deprive is actually a hard counter. Now, it does have the drawback that you have to return. You know what? I just saw that this isn't up for you guys. So let me bring that up. Oh, it's supposed to be minimized. Okay, we got that up. Sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, the card is Deprive, and so Mana Link scales really bad as the game goes along. Now, you can you can make the argument that if the game's going long, then Blue Red Delver is probably going to lose, and that may be true uh, to an extent. But being able to sort of being able to have that late game hard counter to maybe buy you one extra turn and ensure victory uh, is something that Mana Link can't doesn't necessarily deliver. Um, the other thing is I think that the drawback from Deprive is just sort of lessened in Blue Red Delver. You know, the deck really only needs probably three lands anyway. So, you know, if you have to return a third or fourth land, it's really probably not that big of a deal. I mean, if you counter a really bad spell, return your third land, untap, replay the third land, you're probably not in that bad of shape. And I think, you know, in this kind of deck that can get away with uh, running a reduced mana base, Deprive is a card that will probably probably be okay not to mention we just have so many cantrips to find you know the lanes that the deck does have so those are the two changes is it charm uh, instead of the monastery swift spear that lsv was running and deprived now i know some people are probably going to say hey you should run thought scour and you know that that might be true i think thoughts 
It, it depends on what you want to do with the deck. I think that if we were playing the Monastery Swiss, Swiss Spear version, I think the Thought Scour is great because what we really want to do is just cast a cantrip and cruise and find burn and find spells to pump up Monastery Swiss Spear and go to town. But I think in a tempo version of Delver, you probably value card selection a little bit higher than just raw, you know, just, just the raw cantrip with the downside of dumping cards into the graveyard. It's not necessarily a downside because we are cruising, but I think sleight of hand might be better because we do need counters, we do need vapor snags, we, we need the ability to sort of sculpt a little bit, and I think sleight of hand gives that gives us that where um, Thought Scour doesn't. And so on the tempo version of Delver, I think it's likely that it's better. Now let's look at the sideboard. We have, in our main board, uh, we have a Spell Pierce and a Spell Snare. And in our sideboard, we have a Spell Pierce. So since we're not going to be running Eidolons, I like the idea of bringing in just that second Spell Snare. Um, I think against the decks that you you want an extra Spell Snare and against, it'd be nice to have it. If you want another Spell Snare, it'd be nice to have that. So I, I just kind of, it's a nice round number. A Spell Pierce, a Spell Snare in the main, a Spell Pierce, a Spell Snare in the board. Um, so we got that, and as far as the other card to run, I thought we could take a look at what the Magic Online metagame is doing right now. Obviously we have Blue Red Delver, everybody's favorite tech right now. The Lure Pod is, uh, seems to be doing just fine in this new modern that we're all playing in. I swear, like, four weeks ago, um, maybe less. Modern was a completely different landscape. You had Twin up here, Jund up here. I do think that Twin should come back. Actually, there it is now. It's, it's right here. I mean, Twin gets Dig Through Time, and I think that that's going to be incredibly powerful in the deck. It's definitely going to be... Dig Through Time is going to, should be incredible in Scape Shift as well. Um, but, so this is what we're looking at. Um, we're not seeing a lot of Jund or Junk. Uh, the... Black green decks, I think, are getting pushed out by Treasure Cruise. I mean, think about it. Jund wants to one for one, right? Until it can eventually get ahead with a card like um, Bob, Dark Confidant, or maybe just take over the game with Eliana. And in a meta game where you're one for oneing, putting cards in their graveyard, and suddenly they untap, draw Treasure Cruise, and draw three, it makes cards like Thought Scour and just you know, the, the hand disruption card's a lot worse, as well as, well as Lily, too. So, uh, I think that's probably why we're not seeing many of these decks online right now. Um, so we have Delver, we have Electricery for those, we have Meliripod, um, I think we just race Meliripod, um, maybe prob probably bring in Molten Rains, uh, Spell Snare's terrible, maybe Spell Pierces if we can get their pod, Pillar of Flame for sure. Um, scape Shift, I think we're just trying to race Scape Shift, obviously, and we do have interaction in the form of Pierce and Snare. They run Remands. Um, uh, Affinity, we have our Shattering Sprees, Blue Red Delver, we have, again, the Electricaries Burn, we have our Dragon Claws, Splinter Twin, we have one Combust, um, and then there's also Death Taxes, Merfolk, Amulet of Vigor, but if we're talking about the top nine decks here, um, LSV in this video did say that the sideboard might be a little bit soft of Splinter Twin uh, because there was only one Combust, so I think we'll just add another Combust. Plus, since Delver is, you know, such a force right now, Delver's really good at protecting their primary threat, if they're, especially if they're playing the tempo version, which uh, looks like this one is, being that 100% of them run Delver. Well, actually, though this might be the all-in Monastery Swift Spear. Uh, actually, it's just, it's hard to say. Oh my gosh. Uh, man, there's a lot of Delver being played. Look at that. I mean, granted, we're looking at the Delver deck, so this is also in the Delver, but just in this modern daily, a lot of people are playing Blue Red Delver. Um, but I think, you know, I haven't really played the match, but Combust seems like it could be reasonable in the Delver match because you can kill somebody's Delver and there's nothing they can do about it. Uh, now, it doesn't kill Young Pyromancer, so maybe it's, it's actually not that good, but... Um, you know, I, we're going to learn together. I don't know this deck very well. Um, I've never really played it. Just tinkered with it here and there. Um, so let me know what you guys think. If we're not going to run Eidolon of the Great Rebels, uh, what should we do? Okay, so we have our deck. Um, if you don't know what Blue Red Delver does, essentially it is like a 
an aggro control deck. It's a tempo deck. It wants to land an early threat and delver. Hopefully you don't bolt it. Untap and then play another land and hold up cards like Remand or Mana League or Deprive to protect delver. Um, it will then uh, gain a tempo advantage maybe by allowing you to tap out to play your creature, which you then send back to Vapor Snag. Uh, untap, attack. So, you know, it, it really just tries to sort of make your opponent stumble awkwardly over their plays. Uh, it also runs Cataxian Probe, which gives you uh, essentially really good information to know how to best use your counter spells and bounce spells and stuff like that. So, oh, and then just refuel with Treasure Cruise and then just have more burn in Temple spells and threats and, and just kind of keep that whole game going. So, okay, so there's our deck. Uh, and I'm going to warn you guys, like I said, I have not played much of this deck, so I'm not... If, you, if you're looking for how to play Delver perfectly, please go watch LSV. But <laughs> if you kind of want to maybe, you know, see maybe sometimes what not to do and just sort of take part in, like, helping me stumble through learning this new deck and maybe making some play suggestions, then please stick around. Uh, we're going to jump into a modern queue here. Hopefully we'll pick up a game quickly. All right. Let me actually do the event. I just want to make sure. Okay, I did select Blue Red Delver, and Blue Red Delver is this deck. All right, cool. I just want to make sure I play so much Blue Red Geist, I didn't want to jump in with the wrong deck. All right, Modern, two-man queue, pay or two event tickets. Wait for an opponent. Hopefully, we will not be waiting long. Uh, so tonight, I think it was Monday, I went to my local store. There's really two stores I like to go to, but I went to local, my local store. Uh, I played Blue Red Geist per usual. I am actually back up to two dig through times in that deck. Um, that's not this video though. We can talk a bit more about that later, but I did go 3-0, had a lot of fun. Uh, it's still my favorite deck. That deck is just such a blast to play. Uh, okay, so we won the die roll. Fantastic. We are going to play first. Uh, okay, so we have a couple lands, an animal pyromancer, a probe, serum visions, probe, and treasure cruise. This seems like an automatic keep. So we're gonna keep. And we're gonna, um, you know, I think we're gonna Serum Visions, but I don't necessarily think we need to probe. Um, we're not gonna play creatures, so we don't necessarily need to see what's in our opponent's hand. Um, but then again, probing would give us information with regards to what we should put on top or bottom. So maybe we do want to probe. Obviously, it'd be nicer to have a young Pyromancer in play, but I, I just like the play of going probe, looking at their hand, and then deciding what to do with our Serum Visions. So let's do that. And you guys can tell me what you thought about this line later. You know, uh, okay, so it looks like we're playing Burn here. Um, we're gonna be taking a little bit of damage, unfortunately, to get uh, our business off, our business online. But we know he has an Eidolon. So maybe we'll get lucky with our Serum Visions and we'll be able to put like a Spell Snare on top. Uh, okay, so let's write this down really quick. He's got Battlefield Forge. Uh, another one. Eidolon. Forked Bolt. It's important to know that he has that because we're gonna have him on Pyre Rancher. Clearly that's why he's bringing in that card. Lava Spike and Rift Bolt. Okay, so we got that information. Uh, we drew a Bolt. Um, that is a way to get rid of the Eidolon, although we're taking lots of damage. Spell Snare. Okay, so there's no Spell Snare, but we do see a Mana Leak. Um, so I think because we have a own Pyromancer, I think Probe just is, is good to get tokens, but maybe we actually don't want Probe next turn. Oh, we did draw Spell Snare, even better. So I think we're just going to try to run our opponent out of some cards here. Hopefully next turn he tries to play Eidolon. Uh, if he doesn't, we'll just Mana Leak it. If he does, we'll spare Spell Snare it. Um, so, you know, it, it just trips. I'm going to put it on top, uh, and then I'm going to put Mana Leak. Um, and the plan being... He's going to play his land, suspend something perhaps, and then we're going to untap and hold up Mana Leak and Spell Snare. And we have a Taxing Probe below that, which I'm not sure that we want, but I guess we'll see. 
So our opponent doesn't look like he's going to do anything. Nope, he's Lava Spikiness. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and play our Mountain and just pass the turn. Now we have a Spell Snare up in addition to a uh, Mana Leak. see our opponent did play that lava spike looked like that's what he actually drew now uh, fork bolt and rip bolt are both one um, Eidolon is two so we could just mana leak this lava spike which I think we're gonna do uh, and then next turn we'll have our, our spell snare for the um, actually next turn we can if we draw well we're not gonna draw land. we're gonna draw a probe so if we play our probe, then if we we're, if we play a probe, maybe we'll draw a land. Uh, okay, so we could play Young Pyromancer. You know, let's just probe and see if we hit a land because if if we do, um, well, he's got that forked bolt. He'd probably definitely play the forked bolt in that case. So let's just. You know, I know we're taking a lot, but let's take another look and just see what we draw into. Forked Bolt, Forked Bolt, Eidolon. Um, did we see it all? Okay, so yeah, put that other one, put this one. Forked Bolt, Forked Bolt, Eidolon. Okay, so we might not be playing our um, Young Pyromancer just yet. Obviously, we want to be able to protect it. Uh, there is a land, but the forked bolts cost one so we're not gonna be able to spell snare it so let's just let's just pass the turn and have spell snare up for Eidolon our life total is obviously quite low so we may just be dead because we're too aggressive with our life total Okay, so it looks like he's going to play around Spell Snare and not play this Eidolon. Oh, no, there he played it. Yeah, so we're definitely going to Spell Snare the old Eidolon, and then we'll fetch for a Sting Dance. Um... So we could play Young Pyromancer and Vapor Snag it, but when he fork bolts it, he's going to do one to it, one to us, which will put us at six. And if we Vapor Snag it, we put ourselves at five. Uh, but that only leaves him with another forked bolt in hand. Uh, actually, he does have three cards in hand, so I mean, two of them are forked bolts. I don't know if that's, that doesn't seem right. Um, actually, I think let's just let's probe again, but this time we're going to pay a blue. So you have three. <laughs> He's got all the fork bolts. Interesting enough, he almost has enough damage and fork bolts just to kill us. So like a mana leak. Oh, is a charm? Great. We can counter one of his fork bolts. Um, I still don't think we're right, quite ready to. Oh, you know what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We could just treasure cruise, um, but then we don't draw. If we don't draw into a land. And then we cannot is it charm so i think i want to keep is it charm up for one of his burn spells and then next turn we can go ahead and um we can, after that then we can go ahead and cruise that's what we want to do we want to cruise uh okay so he had another one of those that's unfortunate um and this so if we kill it we're gonna take two so i guess we'll just bolt it yeah, I mean, there's really nothing else we can do about it. So we're gonna bolt it and take damage. And then we're going to treasure, because we have Snapcaster Mage, so I think we probably wanna keep our Serum Visions. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I think probably more than burn we want the Serum Visions. So let's just cruise here. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Go to the probe. I think that's correct. Maybe that's incorrect. Uh, mountain, Reman, there's a Serum Visions. I don't think we want to cast it because I think we want to hold up um, some kind of counter magic like a Reman, which I guess Reman's not great because he can just replay the fourth gold. But let's see what he draws here. So he shocked himself. I think, I think we just remand it. Um, we could, is it charm it? And then we go down to three and then he can't play anything else this turn. But, you know, we really don't have enough of a way to gain life, and we know he's got a lot of Forked Bolts. Uh, if we if we remand it, then we could potentially just die. Because, I mean, we could just die anyway. He's got... Well, no, 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 I guess we know everything his hand is Forked Bolts, so... If we remand it, he can then put us to one. If we... Is it Charm it? He can just let it get countered and then put us to one anyway. Um... But we obviously have to do something about it. I think we just, we just, is it charm it? I mean, maybe that's not right. It doesn't really get value out of is it charm? doesn't really trade for that forked bolt, so the correct thing for him to do is probably just to pay for it and then still get his have his fork bolt like give him value by reducing our life total. But it, it means he can't do anything this turn. The our other option was to remand it, but then we just if we remanded it, we'd be at one right now. So there is that. So we have another young pyromancer. Well, I don't think we're winning this game. We could cast Young Pyromancer off these two red and then Serum Visions and make a token and have one mana up. But, I mean, even if we found like a Spell Snare, we're just dead. Maybe we just want to Serum Visions and hope we draw like a Mana Leak. Because um, if we Serum Visions then we can still keep Mana Leak up and it can we can mana like a forked bolt and then the other forked bolt put us at one. Uh, I don't know what he's gonna draw. Yeah, I think that's our best line because the young pyromancer is we just die. Um, so we drew a sleight of hand and uh, I mean these aren't gonna save us. So we're, we're effectively dead. We can remand his. Oh, you know what we could have done? Too late. We could have actually snapcaster mage. Is it charmed? Good sleight of hand now. I don't think I've played a land. But even if I like found a land, then I'm not gonna find the counter spell. Um So I think that we're just dead. And it doesn't really matter what we do. So we're just gonna play any well, I'm not just gonna do that. I'll pass. I like represent counter magic. I was gonna say I'll just play the young pyromancer and slide a hand, but then obviously we're just dead, so Okay, we're gonna let that one resolve. There's a bolt. I'm kind of surprised our Went for it, but uh, okay. So I guess here we sleight of hand and hope to find a mana leak. Uh, none of these do that. We'll put serum visions in our hand. Put that on the bottom. Uh, 
We're gonna cast. Uh, we're just dead. We're so dead. Oh my god! I, you, oh, we could have visit charmed again, but then he can just pay for it actually. So that's not really that's not really victory. Um, we're just gonna pass back. We're eating up the clock. We're not living. We're just trying to learn the deck. We're not gonna. We're not winning this this game, but we're trying to figure out what to do right. I feel like I'm really playing awful. I haven't even got like <laughs> I'm playing Blue Red Delver. I haven't played a Delver. I haven't played a Young Pyromancer. I'm doing everything incorrect. Uh, we're gonna remand that. Let's see what we draw. Vapor Stag. Okay, well we're gonna just concede. I mean, let me see. He's gonna cast it, right? Maybe he won't. Maybe we're gonna get really lucky. He's not even gonna really cast it. Let me get rid of this. Okay, yeah. So we're just done here. Um, okay, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's bringing an artifact hate. I'm sure everybody's doing that at this point. Um, so our remands seem less good here. Um, we're just giving him burn spells back into his hand, um, and they're so cheap anyway. I think we have better things to do than electrolyze and maybe maybe spell pierce is, is pretty good. I, I like spell snare as well because skull crack, Eidolon are both uh, are both two mana. Um Is it Charm seems okay? Pierce, Pierce, Spell Snare. I guess the Vapor Snags aren't doing a whole bunch. Um, I mean, he does play like. Yeah, I don't really like the Vapor Snags because all his creatures are so cheap. It's not that big of a tempo play. Um, so maybe just instead we want like. Like, we don't have another instant speed removal spell. Um, Pillar of Flame can kill Goblin Guide. Uh, maybe we just want to bring in another. Maybe let's we'll bring in back another spell snare and bring in an electrolyze, and we'll give that a try. Guess we'll play first. Uh, okay, so we have a delver and we have a probe and we have some bolts, so we're gonna keep this in. And we're gonna open up with probe again just to see what our opponent has, because I don't think he's gonna hesitate to use his. Um, his removal spells on Delver of Secrets. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's got a Fork Bolt and a Goblin Guide. Um, we also do have... Um, uh, fork Bolt, we, we also do have Treasure Cruise. And, so I think what we're actually gonna do is we're just gonna play this, and we're gonna play Delver. Because if he chooses to like play a red mana source, oh, I forgot to write down his hand. We know he had Forked, Bolt, he had a Boros Charm, he had a Goblin Guide. What I'm saying is if he chooses to just kill our Delver, then that's kind of a little less, that, that that's less damage that we're taking. And then now we can play our Arid Mesa and untap and kill his Goblin Guide, uh, or maybe just mana leak it. So he had a, Forked Bolt, which he just used, a Boros Charm, a Goblin Guide, and I was just too hasty. So we're going to let this trigger, and then we're going to get a Mountain and just bolt it. Let's bring our Graveyard up. That's important. Uh, so we'll let the trigger resolve. Dragon Claw is next, so that seems good. Um, I think because Dragon Claw is next, we do not want to actually shuffle it away by cracking the Air Mesa. So I think we're just going to force to take two here. Um, but then we can just pollute a Delta for an island and have up play the Dragon's Claw and have up Bolt. So I guess he's considering the. My mate will K. Sorry, man, I'm not. Uh, yeah, we don't want to shovel that away, so we're gonna we're gonna take the damage from Goblin Guide. Unfortunately. 
We're gonna untap, draw it, uh, play it, and then play. Pl we're gonna let's see. What do you do? Tap for something. Did I not see. Oh, suspended rift bolt. Okay, we'll leave that up because he suspends things. All right, so we're gonna play this, and we're just gonna get an island, and we're gonna play this. Do we want to do the two islands or do we want to do the mountain? Yeah, I think we're just going to do this. And then we're probably going to, you know, we're going to let the goblin guy trigger happen again. But. So I don't actually know if Dragon's Claw gains life off for a full... Oh yeah, because you still have to cast it. Yeah, we're gonna... I'm probably just gonna say always yes to that. <laughs> so we'll let Dragon... We'll go let Goblin Guide's ability trigger, see what's there. I mean, I feel like I'm already at an uncomfortable life total, but at least we have Dragon's Claw to help. Goblin Guide reveals a... He reveals a, 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 oh, it's down here, a Gataxian probe. Uh, you know, we do kind of need a cam trip, but I don't want to take an additional two, so I'm just going to bolt it. I'm going to get a mountain and lightning bolt our dear friend here. So we, doesn't, we know he doesn't have his goblin guide anymore. Oh, we also gain, that's so convenient. We gain life. Can we say, let's say always. I mean, yeah, I want to say always, yes. Let me give you that option. That's convenient. I guess I knew that. I just wasn't thinking about it at the time. Boros turn. Poop. Yes. Oh, we don't really need more lands, but can we just cruise? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So a cruiser costs three, so yeah, we can. Uh, let's delve these away. Well, let's see. We have mana leak up right now. Cast a bolt, it just reduces the cost. I mean, we just dealt for six, uh, but we still need to tap two lands. Maybe we just want to. He's got three cards in hand. Maybe we just want to. Well, let's see. If we Scalding Tarn, actually, that's one, two, three, four, five, six for the Scalding Tarn, so it costs two. So, yeah, I guess we can. We're just going to get an island. Actually, no, we're going to mountain. That way we kind of have even mana. Uh, get a mountain, and then we can. Let me make sure we're doing this right. I'm not making mistakes. We'll cast this. We're just going to delve everything away. Yeah, and then we can do a blue and a red. Still hold up mana leak and get some fresh cards. I mean, hmm. That's curious. I guess we could have we could have mana leaked that that bolt, but I would kind of wanted to see what we drew first. Um, I think it's worth it just to play the other dragon's claw. I mean, that means like his most efficient spell, lightning bolt, effectively does one. So I think that's fine. So this is going to basically, Goblin Guy will do zero damage. You know, it used to be that you just right click. Oh, there it is. So always yes. Always yield. So it should just do that automatically now. Uh, okay. 
Goblin Guide. The attacks. He revealed a young Pyromancer. That's pretty good. So next turn, we actually play this Scalding Tarn. Um, first, let's play this. We're going to play Young Pyromancer, gain a couple of life, bolt the Goblin Guide. Oh, we got to put these on the stack. Uh, is it always yield? And then always yes. Yes. And then we're going to bolt the Goblin Guide. Uh, I guess we'll just do it now. Make a dude. Gain some life. Um, and then we have mana leak that we can hold up. So let's pass the turn there. I mean, <laughs> if we do win this game, it's going to be hard to win the next game. I'm playing so slowly, guys. I apologize. It's a new deck. And there's interactions I'm just not used to. Uh, Vexing Devil. Um, is it two cards in hand? Yeah, I mean, I'm fine to mana like this one. So we will fetch a, let's get another blue source. So that's all we can get. So we get an island and a mana leak. Get a dude. Pass turn. Um, We're gonna pay the blue. I don't think there's a reason not to. Take a look. This is the mana confluence. Okay, so now we just gotta quickly uh, end this game. Sleight of hand. Always yield. Uh, we don't really. Need... Oh yeah, that's right. We can't choose. That's just either top or bottom. So maybe we we gotta take in the scalding turn since it thins our library just a bit. Um, all right, so we're gonna do a combat attack with the team. All right, sweet. That was fantastic. Um, it's not the biggest fan of Electrolyze, but I mean, Do you know, we definitely, you know, again, these just don't really do what we want them to do in this matchup. Neither do these. Neither do these, obviously. This doesn't kill his guys. It kills, like, one guy. It doesn't kill the most important one. Um, that his, mana, his deck is so mana efficient. Anyway, Molten Reigns is not very good. Yeah, so we're just going to submit with this again. All right, let's see. It's a fun deck though. I already like it. Drawing cards, cruising, a lot of the little decision points. Um, hmm. So I think I kind of want to keep this. We have one land, but we are on the draw. We have a Sam Visions, and then we have a Spell Pierce for his early burn spells. Um, so yeah, let's give that a try. Goblin Guide, our Vexing Devil. It's unfortunate because we're gonna have to like. I mean, we'll see what we draw. We're not gonna. We're not gonna take the four. If we draw another land source or a blue source, then we'll just air Mesa into a bolt, which that's what we're gonna do. Or into a mountain to cast this bolt. So we took one instead of four. That was good. So I have F6 tier, so our opponent can do whatever he wants, and we have no responses because we are complete. Really, that guy's a bad person. <laughs> um, hmm. I don't really want to take four at all. 
we do have a snap and we have a bolt in the lightning yard, but I don't actually, let me think. You know, if we like, if we had a good taxing probe, then we could play our, maybe play our Pymancer and then probe for two and get a token to just block this Vexing Devil until we draw on a way to answer it, but I'm not 100% sure if we're going to, if this is going to happen, um, which means we're going to take four. Uh, I'm going to opt not to take it. So there is actually another land. Um, so let's just Serum Vision. Let's see, Serum Visions. So we, we do have a way to kill it next turn, so we're probably, we may just end up taking four from it anyway. But we don't have a way to the you know, Pyromancer and get a token to block the Vexing Devil, unfortunately. So let's just Serum Visions. Uh, at least we got another Serum Visions, a Taxium Probe. Um, we are going to need a way to deal with that thing. We know he does run Forked Bolt, so playing a young Pyromancer, and even if we pay the blue for a taxing probe to make a Pyromancer and a guy, means that we could potentially still get blown out. But I think we still want this other Pyromancer. Do we want this Aaron Visions? I think, see, but this doesn't give us any way to deal with, with that. Um, hmm. I'm kind of going against my better judgment here. I'll put this on bottom, I'll put this on bottom. And, oh my god, that would be so gross if we like cast this for two life and take four. I'm not going to do that. We're just going to have to, we're just going to have to take four from this Vexing Devil. We have six minutes. Oh my god, it's like doubly gross. <laughs> it's the worst. Revealing a mana lake. Super great. Take tons of damage. Gross. Uh, I don't know what to do here. Uh, let's see. Actually, I guess we just snap and bolt the Vexing Devil and block the Goblin Guide. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So, let's do that. He's gonna attack, we're gonna let the trigger happen, then we're gonna, before blocks, we're gonna bolt the Vexing Devil, block this guy. So he's gonna attack, we get the Goblin Guide attack trigger, see what's on top of our deck, which I guess we're gonna just shuffle it. Maybe we're gonna shuffle now. That's interesting. If we shuffle now and we see it, there's nothing we can do about it. Um. I'm gonna shuffle now. Reduce the deck, and then maybe it won't be a land. Thin the deck a bit. All right, so we're gonna let the trigger resolve, and it reveals a spell snare, which could be useful. Uh, okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and snap. And then target this bolt. And has priority on our little thing, on our triggered ability, bolt the vexing devil, move to blocks, block the goblin guide, and crisis averted for now. <laughs> We're still at 12, it's no good. Um, well this is gonna be kinda gross, but Actually, you know, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna play our young pyromancer, and instead of probing, we're just gonna hold up spell snare. The guy's got like five cards in hand, though, so unfortunately, he's got almost no mana. So we should be able to spell pierce whatever he plays. All right, yeah. So whatever he plays, I think we'll be able to spell pierce. 
Uh, I'm going to hit F6 because I'm not going to do anything else in this turn. When he passes priority, he allows the spell to resolve. Then, um, yeah, pass priority, let, let the spell resolve, and then we'll just un, we'll pass the turn, which we just did. So, so it's his turn. We have Young Pyromancer. We have an island, and we have Spell Pierce for anything that he plays, unless it's a creature. But we do have an uh, yeah. So we're just gonna Spell Pierce that. And hopefully he doesn't have another land. We have a Forked Bolt of our own. Okay, so we still want to hold this blue up. So I'm not going to... Um, we could just Forked Bolt him. It's a sorcery anyway. I think we probably will. Get another do. Could potentially serve as a blocker. We're gonna fork bolt him, and then we leave up either spell snare, spell pierce, or mana leak. All right, no land. I mean, yeah, it's not fair. I shouldn't really like wish our opponent doesn't get any lands. Did he suspend? Okay, yeah, he just suspended a spell. Um, okay. Oh, we have an Electrolyze, but we're still on the Keep Up Spell Pierce and these other things, so we're just going to attack here. Rip Bolt's going to come out of Suspend. Um, oh, okay, no, there it is on the stack. All right, so... Uh, Malik or Spell Pierce. I don't think it really much matters. Um, I guess we'll just use Spell Pierce because it's more mana efficient and maybe if we draw like another Snapcaster Mage or another Island then we have it in the yard to use. I mean, not much our opponent can do on one land. I guess we get, he's got a ton of spells. We could potentially still somehow lose this game, but... Uh, so we're gonna play that. Um, so he's at eleven. We have one. We have one, two, three, four, five. So we do five this turn. Put him at six. If we pay for the exact same probe, uh, then we'll have lethal next turn. Plus we have we will still have a blue up for whatever he plays. So that's the plan. We're gonna do five, then we're gonna taxing probe, make another guy, hopefully do six. Uh, so let's attack. I mean, I guess the other option is we just get an island and if he does just do one thing and we spell pierce it, uh, we don't have a spell pierce. Um, we could mana leak it, which means we still make a guy. Uh, and if he doesn't do anything at all, which just seems extremely unlikely, then we can just electrolyze him. Um, either way, I guess let's just take a look, because I don't really see how that... We can use our mana now. I don't really see how that buys us any extra time. Uh, Vexing Devil, Searing Blaze... Um, so he doesn't have a land. If he draws a land, I guess he can Lava Spike us. I guess the only thing we really care about then is Vexing Devil. If he tries a Searing Blaze or, or anything else, we're just going to Mana Leak it. So. Okay, we're going to pass back. And whatever we counter will obviously... Uh, no land. I mean, that's kind of a bummer. Oh, you know what, guys? I just realized I didn't even have the the game log where I normally leave it. Um, sorry about that. I'd kind of like to be putting it up now, but my apologies. 
Uh, all right. We have a minute left, so we need to hurry up. I just spent like time needlessly trying to get the window right for you guys when I could just be winning at Magic. Mana leak. I mean, I'm sure we're going to win, but it's not like beating an opponent on one land. We still got the five. Is that all that impressive? But, okay, so there's the first video with Blue Red Delver. We beat Burn, but <laughs> I'm kind of hesitant to count it. Like I said, we beat a guy on one land. At least in the... Okay. I don't know if he still gets that or not. Because I'm not in the game anymore. Ah. Uh. Okay, so we got our pack. We made our first Blue Red Delver video. Um, again, this is the list here. I think everything seemed fine. Um, we, again, we still don't have those Eidolons, so we opted to add a Spell Snare and a Combust. And in favor of the Monastery Swisper that LSV was running, we have an Izzet Charm. So, uh, let me do some things really quick. This may be my last game for the night. It's already 11.30, um, and I have work in the morning. But let me do a couple of things, and I don't know, maybe we'll play some more Magic. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And please, comment on the video. Let me know what you think about the card choices, the play decisions. Um, you can congratulate me for beating an opponent who only had one land and still got me down to five. <laughs> or just tell me how lucky I am. And yeah, that's it. All right, guys, thanks a lot, and maybe we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.